Welcome to my channel where I go ahead and actually give you my recommendations for top streaming movies on the platforms. And then I go and actually give you the reasons why I gave those recommendations. So today I'm going to go and actually give you recommendations for Suncoast on Hulu. For main target audience members, people that are fans of family dramas or for coming of age films, this is a must watch movie. Now, if you're a casual viewer, you're not into family dramas, you're not into coming of age films, but you just want to go and actually see if this is worth your time, I'm going to say that you should go and actually add it to your playlist. So those are my recommendations for Suncoast. Now, stay tuned for me to go and actually give you the reasons why I gave those recommendations. He could have died and you weren't here. Once your brother's gone, he's gone. And you will miss taking care of him. Suncoast is a semi-biographical family drama movie that premiered on Hulu in February of 2024. It has a runtime of one hour and 49 minutes, and it stars Nicole Parker as Doris, Laura Lenny as Christine, and Woody Harrelson as Paul. The IMDb synopsis has this. Suncoast, inspired by Chen's real-life experience from early 2000s, follows a teenager living with her strong-willed mother who must take her brother to live at a specialized facility. There, she strikes up an unlikely friendship with an eccentric activist amidst protests surrounding one of the most landmark medical cases of all time. So that's what we have for the synopsis. And I'll go ahead and actually tell you, dramas are like all over the place as far as if they're for you or not. The trailer when you watch Suncoast's trailer kind of gives you that vibe of like a dramedy meaning that it's a kind of mixture of a drama and comedy and it's surrounded by you know a sick brother and the whole aspect of like coming of teenage aspects of it I could kind of see it being that way in the way that they frame it out there so in that realm of it I'm not really a fan of that type of series it really just doesn't speak to me so I'm going to speak to this from the prism or the perspective of a casual viewer the reason why I give you that perspective is that I think you should always know where your review is coming from. So you can go ahead and actually take that into account when you go ahead and actually taking recommendations. I watch movies that are exclusive to streaming services to see if they're right for you. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let me go ahead and actually dive into the review for Suncoast. Because I don't actually have a lot of references for films like this, after watching this particular movie, I'm going to go and actually liken it to My Life with Michael Keaton and kind of a, and it's kind of like a cross with Clueless. And I know that probably seems a little bit wild, but those are the kind of movies that spoke to me that this movie kind of uh, just springboards off of. So let me kind of tell you about my notes that I have within like the first, second and third acts of this movie, and then I'll kind of deep dive a little bit. So in the first act, I'm going to tell you, they did a great job of introducing the various different characters. And there's really two main characters. There's the mom and the, and the daughter, and they do a great job of kind of showing you what their day to day life is, how mundane it is, how it's just ordinary. It's the run of the mill type of deal, right? They do a great job of kind of showing you this is how they are. And there's really no deviation for that from them. You really kind of get locked in to who they are as characters and you kind of think you kind of know who they are where they're going with it all that kind of jazz and you can really tell that the director laura chan who is the director and writer of this particular movie is really giving you the perspective of who she is and she's doris in this film you are really set up with doris's perspective feelings all that kind of stuff throughout this movie and so you're going to actually feel that in the very beginning in the second act, most of the movie stays within the second act of things that are inciting events to move things forward and things of that nature. And so when you go ahead and actually interrupt that day to day routine that they were in in the very beginning and now we're kind of progressing things forward on there, we kind of stay in that mode for a bit. And we do a very good job of bouncing back and forth between the situation with the brother and how the mother interacts with that and how Doris's character interacts with that. And then what Doris is doing on the other side of that, as far as her school life, her friends and how she feels and things of that nature. So there's a very good balancing act there of doing that. And then also the relationship that Doris uh, goes ahead and actually has with the Paul character, Woody Harrelson's character in this and what that dynamic looks like and what did that contribute to how, how Doris perceives the world in her current situation. The third act, I will just go and actually say for the, the lack of not wanting to spoil anything, I will just say that it will definitely go ahead and actually swing emotions out of you. There's no way that you can't go and actually feel emotions watching the third act. And then ultimately, I feel that there was a satisfying conclusion to it not being any type of Pollyanna type of ending or Disney type of ending. 
So those are my thoughts, initial thoughts of kind of, you know, where I was as far as mentally in the movie. So now when I really sit back and I think about the components that I look at for analyzing the movie, first and foremost is storytelling, right? And really set against the backdrop of a situation that could be very much uh, down and dreary of talking about someone going through the process of dying, passing away, slowly wilting away and things like that. It could be a very down and dreary thing. And what they went and actually did was, I think they put a lot of heart and humanity in telling the story of where there are situations where there's really down times. And then there's a little bit of times that make you smile. And I think that was very important for a movie like this, where shortened runtime of an hour and 49 minutes, there is a, there's probably a compulsion to want to make it down a jury in order to make its point. But I think they did a very good job of pacing to make it um, bounce back and forth between the various different emotions. Very done, done very well like that. They allowed for us to go ahead and actually really understand and develop each character and really understand their motivations and give us, you know, sometimes cheer and sometimes be mad at the various different characters. And I think that's a good... I think that's a good story design for a story like this is that there are no good guys and bad guys there are people just living their lives and i really like that and you could tell that laura chen really wrote this from the heart now in regards to acting which is the other thing that i kind of look at um i really think that nicole parker of playing doris's character and being a teenage character she does a lot of the heavy lifting in this because she is bouncing back she's the one that's constantly bouncing back and forth between the aspect of the negative emotions, the neutral emotions, and, you know, the few times of feeling good and being able to convey that in faces and tones and how she delivers lines. I think Nicole Parker did an excellent job in this. Likewise, Lauren Lenny does a very good job of being the mom there where the mom is actually under various different emotions herself of caring for her children and trying to go ahead and actually hold on to some bit of semblance of life and humanity and things of that nature and having those emotional swings that comes with being an adult in a difficult situation, what have you. And I think she conveyed that single mom thing to the hilt and was a very good job. And I think Woody Harrelson's portrayal in this was very good from the aspect of being that almost neutral voice. And he doesn't have a whole lot of screen time in this. So I, and I don't know if the trailers really convey that or not. There's not a lot of screen time for Woody Harrelson. But when he is there, he's kind of like this voice of reason, a neutral voice, a sage voice and things of that nature, mostly interacting with just Nicole Parker's character, Doris. And I think he has the aspect of really injecting some some words that will go ahead and actually really help define and contextualize the situation that Doris's character is going through. So I think Woody Harrelson did that character justice. And there's some other supporting characters on there that I liked, whether you're talking about the teenagers or the staff facility and things like that, that I liked as well. Some last minute thoughts on here before I just go ahead and actually give you just my summarization on there, because some things that you need to think about when watching Suncoast. First and foremost, obviously, the story is dealing with hospice care and a family that struggles with that and really being understand that's where this is kind of set into. So if you have um, any type of situation, compulsion or ideas about hospice care and going to those facilities, you might want to go and actually get over that or at least check that off. This is actually has religious undertones to it. Obviously, there is a little bit of religious aspect of when you're getting near death, that type of realism really comes into play. The probably the biggest thing for this particular film is set against the backdrop of the Terry Schiavo case in the early 2000s. Um, this was actually this story takes place in the very same facility that Terry Schiavo was at. And that's where there's protesters out there. And that obviously changed the whole atmosphere for the characters in this film and for the real life characters of having to go ahead and actually deal with protesters and this whole attention that's on that facility while they're dealing with their situation. And it just puts a unique spin on this tale being told. So all of those are different intangibles that you really need to understand in order to really go ahead and actually know what you're getting in this particular film. So to summarize it up again, for main target audience members, the reason why you want to go ahead and actually watch this film and it's a must watch for you is that it's told from the heart, from the writer and the director. You feel the emotions, you know what's actually done here. They're very accurate as far as portrayal and things of that nature. The cast is very good. The story is paced out well. You don't get you don't go ahead and actually experience too much of any type of either dreary or good good feelings. They give you a, a nice little ebb and flow in there to go ahead and actually pace it out so that you can feel this movie in its entirety. There's really no wasted scenes in this. And so every minute that you're watching a movie, you're experiencing something um, on a human level. And then for casuals, I'm going to go and actually say, obviously the production value is high. Really the only thing that's going to really, the only reason why I go ahead and actually add it to the playlist rather than you must watch is that if you actually have a hang up about 
the impending death and hospice type of situations, whatever, some people are not able to really adapt to that. And thusly, it might be something that they're going to shy away from and have to get ready for in order to watch it. But that's what I have for Suncoast, now streaming on Hulu. Check it out. Doris, old lady's name. <laughs> it was my grandma's name. Oh. She died, but that was born. <laughs> my God, is there any conversation with you that is not like thoroughly depressing? <laughs> if you sat through this entire review, I appreciate you. I really do. Do me a favor, click like, share, or even subscribe to the channel to help me out to go and actually let me know that I should do more videos like this. Or you can go and actually really do me a favor and go ahead and actually watch another one of the videos that the algorithm thinks that you might like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.